well, the great restaurants very often are difficult to define. You know, you will have a restaurant which happens and everyone goes and it's fantastic and you'll go back and everything is great from the food to the service to the, the from the first moment you're there. Someone say, I want to do the same thing. You open another restaurant, you go there and everything is fine. Some, somehow it doesn't click exactly and you'll tell people, did you like it? They say, yeah, it was excellent. I mean, our weather service, service was very good too. Would you go back? Yeah, I probably will go back, but there is none of that excitement that you may have in that first restaurant. And sometimes it's something which is very, very difficult to define exactly. But certainly the quality of the food, uh, the quality of the service, because you have to be felt welcome without uh, people being condescending to you. Uh, so uh, those are what make great restaurants, yes. There is never uh, uh, a dish which is absolutely perfect, you know. There it can arm but sometimes you get close enough that you're very satisfied with yourself. But again, it has to do with your own palate. Uh, without any question, if you decide on the 10 best restaurants in New York or the 10 best restaurants in France, and if I go to those 10 restaurants, five, maybe five, six of them, I'm going to think are absolutely extraordinary. Two or three of them, I'm going to think they are quite good. And a couple of them, I'm going to say, I don't understand why those people are three stars. And what I'm saying there, is that you cannot escape yourself. So the four or five that I absolutely adore just happen to coincide exactly with my sense of taste, with my sense of aesthetic. So it's purely a narcissistic reflection, if you want, on my own taste, because that coincides with what I like, and the other one, I'm not as familiar with it. So as I said, to a certain extent, you can work with many different people, but you cannot escape yourself. At some point you are who you are, and that will be expressed in the food. That's what I try to tell the student at BU, for example, I have a class of 10, 12 students, hands-on. And I do a class of two hours, I say I'm going to do the perfect meal for you today. A roast chicken, a boiled potato, and a salad. But it has to be done exactly the right way, basting the right way. The salad has to be cleaned up the right way, served at the right temperature, with the right dressing, the right oil, with the right amount right temperature, the potato has to be done this way, and so forth, fine. So they do that, they test it, then they go to the stove and do it. Now they have two hours to duplicate my dish, my, my three dish. And uh, I always say, don't try to be original, don't try to updo one another too, don't try to be different than someone else because you are different and whether you like or not, for the better or for the worse, I am going to have 10 different chicken. A couple of them practically perfect, a couple cold, a couple undercooked, a couple overcooked, a co but whatever. They will be different because you are different and you cannot escape yourself. So you don't have to torture yourself to sign that dish to make sure that people know you've done it because it will be different anyway. Home is the best. Home is always the best restaurant around. Yeah, there are many other, I mean, as I say, I mentioned Jean-Georges in New York as well as uh, Daniel or, or uh, 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 you know, um, Keller, you know, Thomas Keller. Uh, it's extraordinary. Those are extraordinary restaurants and there is only a few that I mentioned there. There is many, many, many more in New York and all over the country. <laughs> Oh, 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 oh,